my channel it's a girl Lissy and today guys we're gonna be talking about some more creepy nostalgic stuff because that's what I do best here on this channel and I hope you guys are ready for it right Angel she says smash a like on today's video let's see if we can get today's video to 10,000 likes guys and if we do I'll continue this series about creepy children show characters that keep me up at night also if you guys are new here be sure to subscribe I have a lot of really exciting videos that I can't tell you guys about yet so make sure you guys are subscribed but yeah guys today we're literally gonna be talking about some of the most cursed creepiest kid show characters on the entire face of this planet and earth because I love talking about weird stuff. We love creepy nostalgia. Tea is hot and let's get into it. So the first scary show we're going to be talking about and character we're going to be talking about is from a show called Wizbit and the character's name itself was Wizbit. Wizbit is a 1980s BBC children's TV show about an alien magician named Wizbit. It starred the established TV stage and stage magician Paul Daniels and his assistant Debbie McGee. The series is set in Puzzletopias, a town inhabited by walking, talking, sponge balls, dice, magic wands, playing cards, and even rabbits. And in this world, the protagonist must solve puzzles along the way. Wizbit's year and a day mission is to find out all about planet Earth. The show is actually partially educational. Yes, somehow this cursed show is partially educational, even though it looks like this. Oh, oh, oh. And it would literally terrify me to even sit in front of the TV show and make myself watch this to learn anything. When I'm staring at Wizbit here on the screen, it makes me literally question the existence of my own life. So Wizbit is a large yellow cone-shaped wizard's hat, voiced by Paul Daniels and played by Tony Friel. Yeah, that's the person inside of Wizbit. Wooly is another character from the show. He is an eight-foot-tall white rabbit, and he's the best friend of Wizbit. Wouldn't you guess that? And he's also voiced by Paul Daniels. Squidry Bog is a purple swamp monster voiced by Martin Daniels, and Professor Doom is a mustached evil genius arch-villain who lives in a castle which sits atop a giant stone fist in the sky. I don't know who directed this show, who thought this was a good concept, or what they were, you know, smoking when they made this, but the show is just all very, very creepy and very strange. Don't even know how somebody thought about these ideas in the very first place to start off with it all. It's all that weird, but if you guys couldn't get the gist here, I don't like it. <laughs> I don't like anything to do with Wizbit. I don't want to watch Wizbit. Comment down below, have you guys ever seen this show and what do you guys think of Wizbit? Would you guys have watched it as a kid? Me? No thank you. I'm glad I didn't watch this one. So the next show we're going to be talking about is um, also an educational one, but not just any kind of educational one. A religiously based educational show. And I do want to put a disclaimer, I'm fine with having beliefs. I do not judge anyone's beliefs because I myself am personally religious, but just the way that they chose characters for the show and directed the show is all around very unsettling, especially the main character. So the main character of the show is Pasalti, and he is a book, specifically a Bible. The show is called Pasalti Songs for Little Praisers. Hey kids, it's time for Salty Songs for Little Praisers. This was a musical show that was meant to teach kids the Bible, featuring a giant blue talking singing man dressed as a Bible book. His name was Salty. They literally put a man in this costume and just painted his face blue and called him the Bible, which is already a lot to take in. During the show, he ran around creepily amongst the screen, interacted with young children the entire time. Like I said, by no means am I trying to make fun of anybody's religion here, because like I said, I am religious and I also have religious beliefs. But if I was a little kid and they put this on TV and they told me, that this is how I'm going to learn something, I would be more terrified by just looking at this man's face than the whole concept that I'm trying to get the gist of. I'd be scared and traumatized by just this show, let alone any of the beliefs on the side. Just the way that they filmed this was not right. <laughs> Even creepier was that all the adults casted onto the show that were dressed as animals, such as sheep, mice, or other creatures, had face paint slapped onto them really creepily and they had to play ridiculous voice roles, like they made their voices sound ridiculous. Can't have much of a praise party without a cast. <laughs> Instead of just making like a full mascot costume, they're like, nah, let's leave the full face and just slap some paint on there and make them be a part of the show. Did not help with anything. There was also really creepy talking creatures, books and boxes during the show that were like animatronic looking. I don't know why, if it's supposed to be a religious show. Everything about this show in general just gave off very unsettling, disturbing, 
traumatizing vibe. So the next show has another really scary creature. Um, this one is called Terra Hawks, and this thing on the screen that I'm putting right here, yes, that is part of the Terra Hawks show. The show is really traumatizing, like all the rest of them. This is a sci-fi children's show created by Gary Anderson. The series was set in 2020 after an alien force has destroyed NASA's Mars base, and Earth apparently is under threat. So we've already passed 2020, we're in the future of the show now, which that literally tells us how old this show is. A small organization, the Terra Hawks, is set up to defend the planet. From Hawk Nest, their secret base in South America, they develop a sophisticated weapon to prepare the battles to come. But the problem with this show was literally just this one character on the screen that was literally traumatizing all the kids. Yes, this was one of the main characters of the show. This character had gray hair, brown eyes, a wrinkly tree-like texture to her skin, almost looked witch-like with long claws, and I can tell you, under all the Reddit forums I've seen, any kid who had this show played to them when they were younger says that they were just completely traumatized after watching the show. They had a hard time sleeping at night and would often have nightmares just thinking about the character. So I can totally see why. So the next show is Nightmare Feel, and I want to apologize. I don't know how to pronounce this. I'm gonna try to say it. It's Slanko Retifak Palacha. I don't know how to say that. Like I said, it's in another language. So forgive me if I said it wrong. Retifak. Latcha is a character from an educational children's TV show. He served as one of the hosts of the show, and this show, and especially this character, is famous worldwide for creating a lot of nightmare feel for the kids who watched it. Ratafak is a puppet that appears with a human peach skin. He has messy thin white hair, blue eyes, red lips, light yellow buck teeth, large round cheeks, a very long giraffe-like neck, and a huge nose. He is wide and stands about seven feet tall, and he has four legs. <laughs> what the heck? He wears a large blanket that is red, white, and light blue with patches on it, and he also wears red gloves in the series, whereas outside of the show, he wears white gloves. The way the puppetry works is two people actually hide underneath a blanket with a sleeve for them, with one of the puppeteers having their arm out of the neckline of the blanket in a peach color sleeve, holding and controlling Ratifax's head. That's really creepy to imagine or even think about people inside of there controlling this huge cursed looking puppet. Ratifax is actually a silly character. His, he's supposed to be silly and goofy according to the show. He's actually slightly a confused person and he's really enthusiastic. For say he would say things that would mislead the children who watch the show, allowing the children to correct him so he'd be like, I don't know, what color is that? Or you know, kind of like some Dora the Explorer type stuff. And this was a Slovakian TV show, I'm pretty sure. If you grew up in Slovakia or had seen this, let me know as a kid if this character terrified you because according to the internet, it caused nightmare feel for a lot, a lot of people. Like a lot of people, specifically this was the character that they hated more than any other kids show character. And that's speaking words, it's made it into the top like most terrifying kids show characters ever, possibly ranks number one. So the next show is one that I've never heard of until I did research for today's video for you guys. And this one is called Telecast. So Telechat had puppets, and these puppets were not your typical puppets. They were very human-like looking animals, and this is where I have a problem with the show. These puppets were supposed to be animals, but they just felt so human-like. The way that they dressed, the way they talked and held their posture, and pretty much presented themselves felt like half animal, half human, and that's where it became really unsettling. So Telechat is a French-Belgian puppet show created by Belgian director Henry. It ran for three seasons between 1983 and 1980. With a total of 234, yes, 234 episodes of these cursed little creatures. And they were each five minutes. So at least they weren't long episodes. They were only five minute episodes, thank goodness. They were a parody of new shows and they were hosted by two funny animals a tomcat named Groucha and an ostrich named Lola. It featured a variety of sentient objects and revolved around the idea that real life elementary particles known as gluons were the souls of objects very strange concept for a TV show. With its surreal and sometimes dark humor, the series enjoys cult status in France and Belgium. According to the producer of the show, a number of episodes were even dubbed in the UK on Disney Channel? What? I don't even know how that's possible. Although apparently many episodes were rejected by Disney on the grounds that Lola showed too much cleavage. Ooh. Isn't that the ostrich? An ostrich with boobs? Excuse me? <laughs> They're a little too human-like. So take it as you guys would like to, but for me personally, the idea of these very human-like animals just came off very wrong, okay? I didn't like it. I didn't like any of it. I didn't like the fact that they were dressing and presenting themselves the way they did with 
just the whole look. I don't know. They could have made really cute puppets, but no, they made those things. And that leads us to our last scary kid show that I used to watch and actually enjoy that some people apparently didn't. And that's Courage the Cowardly Dog. Yes, it did scare me a little bit as a kid, but I still enjoyed it in a really unsettling way. Courage the Cowardly Dog is an American animated comedy horror television series created by John Dilworth for Cartoon Network and distributed by Warner Bros. The title character is a dog who lives with an elderly couple in a farmhouse in the middle of nowhere. In each episode, the trio is thrown into a bizarre, frequently disturbing, and often paranormal or supernatural adventure. The series is known for its dark, surreal humor and its atmosphere. So you guys might be like, what's so bad about that? Well, rumor has it, according to the internet, this show was actually based off a real elderly couple and their dog who lived in the middle of nowhere and had some sort of devil-linked house, and that's where it gets creepy. People say it's based on a real scenario, and during the episodes, if you look closely, they throw in subtle hints to the devil, and it gets kind of dark. This is a kid's show, mind you not, this is where it kind of has problems, and it actually freaks me out looking back at it, that I was sitting there watching that, and my family had no clue that I was watching a show animated, potentially linking to darker things. So they subtly threw in like numbers and animations of the devil, and they were showing this to little kids, yes. Eight-year-old me was sitting there munching on macaroni and chocolate chip cookies watching a show about cursed paranormal with two elderly people who own a dog, and I guess I enjoyed it. <laughs> Jigsaw. Jigsaw was a British television series that came out in the 70s. Jigsaw is a BBC show aimed at children between the ages of four and seven years old. Yes, you heard me, four and seven. Why did it look like this if it was trying to appeal to such a young audience? It beats me, I wish I knew too. It combined elements of puzzle solving and entertainment that the kids, when they watched the show, they were supposed to help solve the puzzles and be entertained by the brainstorming of the show. Like, it was all just a puzzle solving show, I guess. It was broadcasted from the 16th of July in 1979 until June 15th of 1984 until it was completely cut off air because it was scaring people. Parents and children were horrified of one specific element of the show, if you guys haven't already guessed, and that was Mr. Freaking Nosy Bonk. Mr. Nosy Bonk. What kind of name is Mr. Nosy Bonk? Like, in the first place. This was possibly the most horrifying character I've ever seen. He wore a dinner suit with a huge white mask, and during episodes of the show, Mr. Nosy Bonk was often seen giving clues while acting like a mime, only doing hand gestures and saying nothing while he tried to help kids that are watching the show or in the show solve the puzzles by just doing a bunch of weird hand motions and gestures without saying anything. <laughs> He was extremely quiet, which of course added to the awkwardness and creepiness of this character and the show. A lot of people found this character to be extremely unsettling, and a lot of children were horrified of this show, just let alone because of Mr. Nosy Bomb. And honestly, I cannot blame them one single freaking bit, because this thing is gonna give me nightmares. And ever since he has returned onto the internet, a bunch of horror sketches have even been made about Mr. Nosy Bonk, and he's even been created into creepypastas all over the internet. And even more concerning was that some of the fan art was made into a Tumblr page called Sexy Man Mr. Nosy Bonk, where people fetishize this character. Don't ask me why! I don't know what they were- I, that's concerning to me, because this character is freaking creepy. Hot. No, he's not. <laughs> also, I want to mention that apparently in the show, Mr. Nosy Bonk had some mental issues and some very serious anger problems. Mr. Nosy Bonk was alright and content with humanity and humility until Mr. Bean was released by his UFO in 1990 on the popular streets of London. That was when he became completely obsessed with Mr. Bean due to his schizophrenia after taking his anti-health pills by a mysterious Dixmore scientist and it went untreated, resulting in his psychic to shatter like a window and he spiraled into complete madness, which doesn't even make sense. This show became so unsettling it was actually pulled off television and the tapes were supposedly lost. Since it was scaring so many kids and parents, it had to stop being aired. However, there has been some leaks of the tapes that have been put onto YouTube and they're really creepy so I don't recommend checking them out. So that's the tea about Mr. Nosy Bonk. That show was very creepy.
So the next horrifying kids show that we're going to be covering is called Peppermint Park. Peppermint Park is a direct to video children's show consisting of six volumes released in 1987 and 1988 on VHS. The show is a mixture of live action, animation, and puppets. My favorite. We love creepy puppets. Characters included Ernie, who sang a song about the letter M, Snorky, a reptile who is often oblivious to his surrounding and lacks common sense, Maynard, an elderly old man who laminates over his wasted youth, and Piggy, a pig with a big appetite whose voice was similar to that of Kermit the Frog. Many of the show's elements seem to have been copied from Sesame Street. It really feels like they got a lot of inspiration just from Sesame Street with their show. They're basically like a Walmart version of Sesame Street. Boys and girls, here's something you can do when you can't go to the park. Or maybe your friends can't come over to play. One of the main characters named Ernie was a giant, horrifying puppet who would try to scare the children as they watched the show. Well, he did scare the children. Like, the way that he looked and the way that he sang, it was creepy. He would sing unsettling songs and attempt to teach the children and or viewers about the alphabet or other useful things in life. His voice was also ridiculous. I just want to point that out. I don't know why they, you know, casted whoever they did to play the voice of this puppet, but the voice just was not it. Also, I just want to mention that this puppet was bigger than the size of an average adult human. Yeah, take that in. This puppet is freaking huge. Why is he so big? I really don't know and I didn't want to know, but he was a big, big boy. I'm not sure who thought this show was a good idea or who thought that children are going to sit on the screen and watch this puppet sing about the letter M. M. It's such a great letter. Just think of all the words that start with M. It's marvelous. But definitely not me, especially if I'm a kid, that's the last thing I want to be watching. So the next show that we're going to be talking about is called Molly Grubs. Molly Grubs was an Australian TV show for preschoolers featuring storytelling, music, puppets, and a animated face. It was actually mostly remembered just for the single face that was aired on this TV show because parents and kids that watch the show remember this face so vividly from like actually traumatizing them as a child when they put this show on TV. The face was literally just eyebrows, eyes, huge eyelashes. It looked like they're about to fly away bigger than mine a mouth and uh, yeah that was that was pretty much it like there was no actual facial feet it was just a floating face with a blue backdrop and it scared the heck out of kids and parents that were watching the show because the show would be completely normal and all of a sudden you just see a blue screen with like a floating face appear and start talking she was horrifying don't want to know her did you see the kangaroos? They have tiny front paws and big back legs. Also, there was a weird theory about this face. Apparently, people didn't know who played the role of the face. Like, it was hidden for a long, long time. And people were starting to get concerned, especially parents that were, like, letting their kids watch the show were like, what are they trying to hide? People thought they were trying to hide the identity. Basically, they thought the director was trying to hide who's playing the role of the face, and that's why they didn't want to reveal her or whoever was playing the role for some mysterious reason until a few years ago when she finally came out and she revealed that she was the scary blue green screen face lady <laughs> and I don't know why they were hiding it for all these years it was like they were trying to keep something from us um, or that she you know didn't want to be accused for being the scary face lady with the green screen scaring everybody's children anyways moving along we're gonna be talking about the next show so the next creepy show was called the Pops program Pops program is a children television program which was broadcasted in the United Kingdom on Channel 4. The program is presented by a puppet named Pob, played by the puppeteer Robin Stevens, who speaks with a speech impediment and who supposedly lives inside of the viewer's television. So yes, this puppet that you see on the screen was supposed to live inside of your TV. Pop spoke Welsh and supposedly the concept to him was that he was supposed to live within or inside, like I said, the viewer's television. As you guys could already guess or assume, some children did actually believe and began to panic that Pop, the puppet, really did live inside of their television. So much so that some kids would start to get scared in the morning when they were having their cereal, when they put this show on, that Pop was just gonna straight up burst through their television and appear in their living room. And so much so that some of them were so attached to the show that their 
parents would try to turn it off and the kids would start hysterically crying, no, don't turn it off, Pop's gonna die! Because they thought if you turn off the television show that this puppet named Pop who was living inside their television would actually die if they turned the show off. Which became very problematic for a lot of parents, of course. As you know, that would not end well. Pop was supposed to be a goblin baby and he wore a pink and yellow striped jumper and so many kids began to worry about the factor and the fear that he lived inside of the television they really did began thinking that it was real and of course that show didn't end up lasting very long because of the fear it was put in the children's minds and imagination so uh yeah that's kind of a good thing though because pop is really really ugly so i wouldn't want him popping out of my tv either <laughs> and last but not least the last children's show that we're gonna be spilling some tea on is called donkey more so and moru never heard of it until I found it today, and it was creepy, so I want to share it with you guys. This is a Finnish kids show that ran from 1999 to 2001, and it wouldn't have made my list if it weren't for one character specifically, and that character is more so. I hope I said his name right. It was based on a children's book, and the story tells of a donkey overcoming his fear of more so with the help of his friend Moru. It's easy to see why donkey was scared of more so, if you couldn't already tell. This puppet of a sheep was freaking horrifying. It also didn't help that Morso had a tendency to pop up from behind fences or peer in windows like a literal creeper during the show. These puppets had an unsettling human-like face molded into them and the main character's eyes looked like they were constantly popping out of his head and or that he was looking at something with fear constantly, like he had a fear-driven face like just implanted into him at all times, which kind of concerns me. I wouldn't want to watch this if I was a kid. Although the show was all in Finnish, the characters' voices were very, very low and deep and kind of growly, which made it even worse, even though I have no idea what the characters are saying because I don't speak Finnish. But if I was a kid and if I was in Finland and that was on TV, I would be shutting it off. I don't need to be seeing those animal puppets that look like humans who look distressed, so no thank you. <laughs> kid shows can be horrifying. I, it's still bizarre to me that they were appealing to children, but putting things like this on the shows instead of a big cuddly teddy bear or something that's more appealing to a child. Like, what what were they thinking? Anyways guys, that's gonna be it for today's video about children's shows that should never have existed and hopefully the last tapes to all these episodes have been burned forever because we don't need to be seeing them. Anyways guys, thank you all so much for watching today's video. If you guys enjoyed, be sure to smash a like and hit the subscribe button to join the family and comment down below what other kids shows you guys would like me to cover in future videos if they traumatized you as a kid because Quirky. I don't know. There's so many scary ones that I would love to talk about and spill the tea about. Anyways, guys, I hope you have a great rest of your day, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye, guys! Bye.